Christ Community Church and C3 Media presents the Deeper Dive Podcast. Pastor Dina and Pastor Mitch are about to take you on a deeper dive into the Bible. So here is your host, Pastor Dina Harder. All right. Well, welcome back to our Deeper Dive Podcast. And it may look a little different today on the set because it is. We're going to take a few moments to uh, talk about Alpha. And I will tell you more about that. But before I do, I want to let you know who is here with me. First of all, who you're used to seeing, Pastor, Pastor Mitch. Mitch. Hey, everybody. But this gentleman next to me. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I can be nice sometimes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> is usually behind the camera. He's the one that makes all this happen. But he also is leading our Alpha course this fall. So this is Don Hampton. Yeah, thanks. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, so I'm communications director for C3, Christ Community Church, C3 Sports, and C3 Ch uh, Kids Child Development Center. I also produce this podcast, so I'm usually the one behind the scenes, and sometimes you hear me laughing at you guys behind the scenes. This is the face that goes and with the laugh. Also giving you guys time cues and everything else like <laughs> yeah. that. But yeah, I'm honored to be here. Mitch kind of asked me if I would help facilitate Alpha for this fall at our church, and I'm honored to do that. And I've been involved with Alpha for probably about four years now, and I just absolutely love it. So Yeah, great. so as we dive into this um just wanted to say you know you may not live in the state college area you may be in another nation um, there are alpha programs probably close to where you are because it is an international course not just something for us but internationally known yeah alpha is global how did it start mitch because you've been doing it here at the church long before i've been a member here correct well i think yeah you and i were talking about this earlier but alpha started out of a need for an inner city church in London, England to find out how to connect because the population just did not like organized religion, did not like uh, the whole emphasis about religion. And so they were trying to find a way to bridge the gap. And so they came with this thing where they'd have a dinner and then have discussion groups over the things of like, which are critically important, which is like, I just watched a podcast the other night about why is the Bible believable? Why is it credible? How do you look at this ancient book of antiquity and say, is the Bible, I mean, are the text real? Is the, are the, the copies we have, are they, are they you know, bona fide? Do they have the right text? Do they have the right wording? And do, can we trust it? And I think the Alpha program does a great job. So that's what started this whole thing. And then obviously, as you can tell the story about, if you want to talk about Nicky Gumbel, the, mm -hmm. the guy, the founder that actually took it to the next level, his whole story was he was an atheist. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting. So Nicky Gumbel is the guy behind Alpha. And Alpha started in 1977, as you said, in London, England, in the Holy Church of Brompton, which is, I love yeah. that name. Um, <laughs> and it started there, and it grew. And 25 million people have been through the Alpha wow. course since then, and it's grown international. And we've been running it. How long at Christ Community Church here? We've been over 20 years, I think. You've mm -hmm. been through it multiple times. Mm -hmm. I've been yeah. through it multiple times. It's, it's worth every time mm -hmm. I get something new out of it, though. Mm -hmm. I think you have to share just quickly how it came to us. As how in, we, we as a church, how we got yeah. it. Yeah. This is so fascinating to me. We, were, we had a student at Penn State University who was traveling around uh, you know, the university, and she came across our group. And she'd been coming to church for a few weeks, and she was from Russia. She's from the USSR. She said, Pastor Mitch, we did this course back in, uh, in Russia. She was from Siberia. And she said, it's called the Alpha Course, and you need to do it. I never even heard of Alpha, but I thought it was interesting. Once we got into it, it was fantastic. The God used a lady who was from a communist, atheistic country mm -hmm. to introduce us to the Alpha program. Mm -hmm. I just think God has a sense of humor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so really, I guess let's talk about what is Alpha. And probably, you know, we've been talking about it for, you know, for three minutes now. But let's explain what is Alpha is really is the chance to explore the question and the meaning of life. You know, it's a chance for us, you know, it's an overall series and it allows, you know, people to come in and we have dinner together. Um, mm -hmm. It's a non-churchy environment. Uh, we do it in, uh, you know, we don't do it in our sanctuary and it's not a church service. It's a chance for people who have questions about the meaning of life, you yeah. know, and, and what is, and how is God part of that? And how does God become part of your life? But really, if you're questioning things like, is there more to life than this? And like, who is Jesus? And why did he die for us? And how can I have faith? And it's all the questions that non-believers or even believers mm -hmm. who have been for a while are always questioning. And so it breaks it down. And I think Nikki Gumbel, you said it earlier, was an, is an atheist or was an atheist. He was also an attorney. And he was one of those gentlemen who was like, well, if he's going to be an atheist, he needs to know what he's disputing and being an attorney. So he started doing the research 
and researching how he was going to debunk this whole like Jesus and God thing. And it turns out he's like, whoa, I was wrong. And he took it from an intellectual standpoint. What I like is like, I'm not one of those people I need head knowledge. I need to be able to understand what's being said mm -hmm. before I can embrace it and live it and, and have that heart heartfelt knowledge. So Nikki does a really good job of like basically validating the legitimacy of the Bible with other ancient texts and how it's dated, you know, dated back and the accuracy of it. And I think that's probably one of the, we, we hear the term miracles and it's thrown around loosely, but I think one of the greatest miracles of, of this world is the fact that there's a book that's thousands of years old, which is still mm -hmm. relevant and we could draw inspiration from in our lives today. Yeah. And I think, you know, the Alpha Course does a really good job of taking this ancient text and, and making it come alive and making it so it actually is something that we could actually benefit and, and live a more prosperous life mm -hmm. and be able to help each other. Yeah. And I think, too, that it uses video, mm -hmm. which speaks your language. It does, it's, yeah. It's not just a boring, dry mm -hmm. material. Right. <laughs> so let me talk through what, what an, an alpha course is like for someone who comes in. So first of all, you come in and we have a dinner. And it isn't just like we order pizza and sit down and we drink coffee out of styrofoam cups. It's a situation where like we have, like, it's like, imagine you're welcoming somebody into your house so you want to have a nice meal some nice drinks and just kind of have nice conversations so it's a very welcoming environment you come in and we have a nice meal so we sit down we just kind of talk and hang out for about half hour 45 minutes and eat a decent meal and then we go in and we watch these videos and this is what you alluded to and this is what really jumped out at me is because my background is video and film production and um, throughout my career I've been lucky enough I've not I don't, luck has nothing to know but I've been fortunate enough I have six Emmy Awards yeah. 37 Emmy nominations so video and that craft is is my life mm -hmm. and when I saw the production value in these films and in the, in the talks that they do it's it's amazing it's network quality you know theatrical quality productions that are unpacking it and just the way that the camera motions the music the editing everything about it is i was blown away with like the quality because a lot of times in religious based programming it's kind of dry it's like vanilla ice cream it's just kind of like blah. never here no That's never here. Not without here. You guys. Be us. no not right. us it's gonna be other people not us yeah. but they, never dry. they do it with excellence and it's a, it, that really impressed me is like and i know yeah. the budget that goes into that and part of my mind as being a producer i started going into it and, and calculating how much went into doing this so it's amazing at that level too so it's a real mm -hmm. quality production so the videos are 20 to 30 minutes long and each week they unpack different topics and then afterwards you break into small groups and there's no such thing as a wrong answer. There's no such thing as a bad yeah. question. And no one's there to correct. We're there to listen and just going to help each other mm -hmm. figure these things out because we're mm -hmm. all in a different mm -hmm. different trajectory in our life. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's uh, but you know, you get to the point where you're like, is this it? Is this all life is? And like, you just want to kind of figure out. And so you have other people kind of helping you understand that. And uh, you know, it comes from somebody who was an atheist, Nikki Gumbel, who was like, yeah, there is more to life than this, but there's some truth to what's in the Bible and how can you apply it to your life? So it's not Jewish. It's not Catholic. It's not any other you know about any you could label any of it's it's more about it's your relationship with god and how do you kind of fit into into the universe that god has created yeah well and i just like that it's a safe place to ask questions mm -hmm. because we all know people that have questions mm -hmm. we all do and you know they sometimes just feel funny asking the questions or you know is it stupid is that a stupid question but they have them and so I think in these small groups, it's that safe place to be able to say, yeah, I have this question and be able to have that discussion. Mm -hmm. which and, helps. Yeah, and that's exactly it. That's the best part is these small group discussions. The videos do a really good job of like setting things up and making you ask some questions or think about things you never really thought about at that level. And then it's OK to disagree. And what we do as facilitators for this is like, it, let people disagree let people have and don't correct and you know mm -hmm. let them come to the conclusions on their own and you know there's three l's do you know what the three l's are for alpha i have no idea so there's love <laughs> love okay. is the first l so it's like you know have love for each other that's part of jesus's mission so we're supposed to love each other so it's like we're opening our doors we're opening up the doors to our church we're opening up the doors to our homes and to our hearts to let people in and let them explore the second one is to listen and just listen because like we all have similar stories it's just different circumstances and they have different perspectives so we we you know through alpha we listen to each other and then we help each other and then the best one is we laugh together mitch there we go so that's the best part is it's <laughs> nothing serious that's what i love about it. it's transparent you could be yourselves and you can laugh at ourselves and we mm -hmm. deal and help people that are you know you know just kind of go along the way so it's love listen and, and laughter and that's really the keys to the alpha mm -hmm. well, i think one of the areas that we probably need to bring out is when you're watching the videos mm -hmm. they do a great job of, of, of doing testimonies from a wide variety of people Mm -hmm. And uh, every week you get this dynamic story of somebody telling you their life experience. And the one that stands out to me, and I don't remember what session it was, 
was the uh, young man who was the hoodlum thug that was in prison. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he had no hope, no, no idea of getting out, no interest in religion. And yet he gets saved through Alpha in prison. Yeah. Mm. Was that the guy who was rolling joints from the pages of the Bible? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> someone gave him a Bible in prison and somehow they got <laughs> weed into the prison. And he was like, oh, great. This Bible's awesome. Look how thin the paper is. And he was rolling joints and he rolled joints through Matthew, Mark and Luke. And he's we're like, not recommending that. No, we're way. not. We're but saying. he started reading the book, book of John and it was like, whoa, this is pretty cool. And then he you know, stopped rolling joints out of it and started reading it and it changed his life. That gentleman's a pastor now. Yeah. But, you wow. know, that's that's their transformation that the power of Alpha can have. So Alpha is one of those things, too, is like we said, it's, you know, it's global um, and it's, you know, like 25 million people have going through it. But the beautiful thing is, is like we are running at the church. We're running a youth Alpha, which has the exact same curriculum. It's just produced and, and done at a level that's going to appeal to middle school and high schoolers. Mm-hmm. There's also Alphas, you know, for the adults, which we're running. And then there's Alphas that are designed for prison ministry. And there's also wow. alphas too for like for 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 Catholic, you know, for helping people to have the Catholic upbringing and faith mm-hmm. and how they dive into it and how, you know. So it's interesting. So there's a lot of different levels to alpha. So it's not denominational, but it's just how it changes people's lives and, and it meets you where you're at in life. Whether you're a teenager, whether you know you have di- different backgrounds. You know, we have a friend who has comes from the Jewish faith, and there's a lot of things from alpha too that's just like it's it's going to appeal, you know, to yeah. that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I just think it's it's really awesome because I don't believe we've offered the youth version of alpha before i think this is the first and to me it's so important because we know teenagers have these questions we know kids have these questions and they're being faced with a lot now and so the fact that there is a place they can come ask questions get reasons why you know see real testimonies of things that are happening that's crucial Mm -hmm. It is crucial. You know, so we're running it, you know, and their logo is the question mark, you know, for Alpha. And it's like, you know, hashtag try Alpha. You go to alpha.org and you can look at, you know, preview all the stuff that's there and see how things are running. And if, you know, you're not in the State College area, um, you could kind of find other Alpha courses that are Mm -hmm. running. But Alpha is, like I said, it's, it's, it's for everybody. You know, it's not exclusive. Actually, when we were signing up, one of the questions when we I had the table in the lobby for church, someone's like, I thought it was just for men only. I thought it was a men's group. I was like, oh, because no, Alpha. For Alpha, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good segue to where did Alpha come from? Yeah, yeah. Alpha male. <laughs> yeah. No, it's but it came that. from, Jesus said this in Revelation 1, chapter 1, verse 8. He goes, I am the Alpha and the Omega. In other words, he is the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. The Bible also is very clear that it says that Jesus who begins a good work in you will complete Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And I think that's something that gives us, because I don't know about you, sometimes I seem to get overly stressed about, am I doing enough? Am I going enough? And you have to have a confidence that God began a good work in you. He'll complete it. He'll Mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. And I think Alpha does a wonderful job of introducing you to the Godhead. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit weekend is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. That's where you just have those encounters where you have the realization that God knows me and he knows me enough that if I give him some time, he'll introduce himself Mm -hmm. to me in a personal way. Yeah, so you mentioned the Holy Spirit weekend. So let's go through the curriculum of how an alpha runs. So we talked about each night, you come at six o'clock, we have dinner, we watch a, a video, and then we talk about it. And then we just kind of hang out and uh, and just, you know, get to know people a little bit better. So that's every week. But So what happens is it's an 11-week program. So middle of the session, maybe three quarters of the way through, Mitch mentioned there's something called the Holy Spirit weekend. And it's a situation where the group gets together and we'll do four to five different modules in, in an environment, but it really talks about, and everything's progressively based. So the first couple of weeks, it basically goes into, it proves why the Bible is real mm-hmm. and why it's accurate mm-hmm. and historically accurate and mm-hmm. from a literary standpoint. And, you know, Lakey does a really good way of making it indisputable. And you're like, well, I never thought of it that way. Then it goes through the basics of Christian life or just life in general. And then it reveals like God is the center of that and part of that. And then it starts introducing who is Jesus? Why did he die for me? And as you were saying to Godhead, then it gets into this whole thing in which we spent most, how many parts uh, dealing with the gifts of the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit in this podcast series. So we do a whole weekend talking about understanding the Holy Spirit and how it works in our lives and how does, how does the Holy Spirit, you know, um, you know, who is the Holy Spirit? How can you be filled with the Holy Spirit? And what does that look like? It's different for each Mm -hmm. person. 
you know, I, you know, a lot of people have like the whole like the holy roller, but it's not that. You know, you could still be a <laughs> quote unquote normal, normal person, normal person, and be filled with the Spirit. You know, and it, it reveals itself in different ways. And then, how can you make the uh, the most of the rest of your life? And what does the Holy Spirit do? They're the topics we explore in that weekend, and it's a chance for like really, you know, for you to kind of, you know, as a person going through this, to kind of get in touch with God and let God, you know. Li learn to listen to God and then how do you know that's God speaking to you mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be some dramatic where you're like speaking in tongues and you're doing it but that'll eventually come mm -hmm. if you want it and that's a gifting that God you know all those gifts are there it's whether you choose to accept it and mm -hmm. everyone's going to experience God in a different way through that but it just allows you to soften your heart and just learn to listen and learn to kind of you know respect and obey to what God has in store for you so that weekend's an immersive weekend then we mm -hmm. jump back into the curriculum for the next couple of Tuesdays after that and wrap it up. So, and you probably said this, but how how long does this course last? So it's eleven weeks. So right now, if you're you know watching this you know in a timely manner when we just recorded it, we're going to start September seventh, mm -hmm. and we're going to wrap up November sixteenth. So it's an eleven week program mm -hmm. um, that runs throughout, and then you know same thing, and we'll do it again in the spring. So yeah, and we usually just as Don just mentioned, we usually do this in the fall and then go through it again in the spring. So I uh, would encourage you if you're in the area come on out and check us out but I just want to comment and then maybe you have a particular session or question you know but for me uh, facilitating Holy Spirit weekend was one of the first things I did whenever I came on staff and I still remember the encounters of that weekend just being able to pray with people and see them realize wow holy spirit is real it's not just something we say father son and holy spirit mm -hmm. you know but that he is real and he is active here on the earth and i just saw life change as they uh would hear a rhema word from god just you know something that god is speaking to them through holy spirit and it was just it was really powerful for me to be a part of that weekend um and just to see what god was doing so I don't know if there's a highlight. No, I was thinking about one of the one of the testimonies, Don, I think would be appropriate for you. You kind of grew up. I didn't grow up in a church that talked much about the Holy Spirit, but you kind of grew up in an atmosphere. You kind of were, were sort of like versed in Holy Spirit. So you were a little bit more, say, skeptical, cynical, a little more jaded about Holy Spirit stuff. <laughs> but it seems like God used this to really help you break down some of those walls. Yeah, it's, it is kind of an interesting story. So I grew up in a church. I'm not going to say the denomination, but it was like it was a very charismatic church. And mm -hmm. there was a lot of my dad used to call the how great thou art. You would get people come in and they would put the show on mm -hmm. and like, you know, and then they put themselves on a pedestal. And there was a lot of that, you know, hypocrisy that was seen. And I mm -hmm. saw it from the pulpit and I saw it from people in the congregation. And as a kid growing up in that, it was hard for me to kind of really have take faith seriously because I saw the, the bad side of it. And I, and I was, you know, you use this term, you, you, you had a drug problem when you were a kid, right? You explain how your drug problem was. Because I had the same drug you problem. You like that. You like that. Huh? Yeah. 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 My parents drug me to church. Every time the doors were open, I had a drug problem. I was yeah. Sunday morning, <laughs> Sunday school, Sunday morning church, Sunday night uh, training session, mm -hmm. Sunday night service, Wednesday night, youth group, choir. Mm -hmm. I was drug out to everything, just like you were, Pastor mm -hmm. Nina. So don't be... <laughs> I don't think side. choir uh, lasted very long, but all the other ones, you were yes. <laughs> that was that was a, there is a picture. There is a picture of me, and I'm standing right next to the choir director with my little robe on. I don't know how he got next to me. Like I was a good kid, but anyway, he was right next uh, to yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I had that same drug problem. My parents same way. My dad was on the board. He was also you know very mechanical, a carpenter. So he physically built the church with his hands wow. and you know, with the group. And then was also on the board. And you know, and then I would hear when him come home, and I would just hear stories. Or and people would come into the church, and they would blow in, and they would blow out. And then you would see him on the front page of the newspaper committing some horrific, you know, act and things like that. But it wasn't until I became an adult that I realized why my parents drug me to church and what they were trying to do and what they were trying to get out of it. And Alpha kind of helped unpack some of that. And it made a relationship where I wasn't looking at the people in the church and what the people are doing. It was like, what's my relationship, you know, vertically mm -hmm. with, with God. And, it, and that's where Alpha helped me unpack and a lot of understand a lot of that stuff. So that's pretty much my background. And, you know, I grew up in the church and as soon as I could get away from him, I did. And as a young adult, and then to my, you know, into my thirties, I was like, I was, I'm doing this myself. I'm an independent me. I'm going to conquer the world. And, and God was with me. And I just didn't realize it or acknowledge it at yeah. the time. And I look back 
And whether it's, you know, I adopted two kids, whether it was the success of me in, in my professional world, I mentioned the Emmys and some other mm -hmm. things like that. And I have a lot of success and I have a, a pretty, you know, extensive resume and a lot of credits that I'm really proud of. But what I'm doing now with the church and with Alpha and with being, you know, the communications director here, it's like, to me, the sum of all those things that God has provided for me in life up to this point, I think it's really now starting to kind of like come to fruition. I'm kind of starting to see, you know, where, where things are and just to have that, you know, we talked about prophecy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think for me, I realized, you know, prophecy isn't like that old guy with the pointy finger in the robe <laughs> making us predictions. For me, prophecy for me is be able to like see the finished product yeah. and have that mental image. And I think any creative professional mm -hmm. who could do that, whether it's, you know, somebody who in the trades, whether it's a machinist or a carpenter or an automotive or mm -hmm. whatever those trades is like, they could take a pile of raw materials and in their mind's eye, they could see what it can be. It's yeah. the same thing with what I'm doing with film production or mm -hmm. you talked about, you know, fine arts or something, painting or drawing and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I think that is prophetic vision and God mm -hmm. gives those gifts and there's biblical characters in the Old Testament that we talked about in some of the previous podcasts where that's a situation where like, you know, God uses those giftings in different ways. Mm -hmm. You know, he provides you the gift to be on stage and be able to be mm -hmm. that articulate and preach and the mm -hmm. same thing with you guys. And it gives me that prophetic vision to be able to take that and be able to minister and teach, you know, whether it's through technology or whether it's through one-on-one or through it's this alpha course and be able to facilitate that. But I don't know, getting back to that, that's I think where, you know, my testimony is. And I think alpha helped mm -hmm. unpack a lot of that and helped me understand like what is really important in life. And then mm -hmm. for me, like, how do I, you know, with my kids, you know, do I drag them to church? Well, you want to kind of create an environment where it's not churchy and it's like you despise it. Mm -hmm. I know as a kid, like, I hate it being at church. <laughs> and, you know, and a lot of kids today is like, they don't want to go to church, but you know, mm -hmm. the youth group here is alive. There's things yeah. happening. You know, my other son is not as active, but he's taking church with him to what he's doing. My, my son mm -hmm. is raised, you know, my other son is, you know, pursuing a career as being a professional motorcycle rider. Mm -hmm. And there's a fuel ministry camp that we go to, mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. we're involved in chapels at those tracks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's whether it's wearing a sticker on your helmet or just kind of living mm -hmm. that lifestyle. And we do our prayer before each race. And it's like, God, let us reflect you through what we say and what we do. Mm -hmm. And success is going to follow from that. And just, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Like, so you don't have to be in the four walls of a church to kind of be, you know, do your evangelism and being out there and having the support of the church behind us. And when we're not on the, at the track, you know, racing and kind of doing what we do and pursuing, you know, God wants us to be happy. He wants us to be successful, but we're still kind of giving that glory to when we're out there doing it. But it's just kind of neat when we come back and, Jim Bucci, who's one of the guest pastors who came mm -hmm. through the youth program here, was a youth pastor, is now at Bethel within the School of Supernatural Ministry. He called my son out in church one time. He's like, if God wants you to be a professional motocross racer, then you be a professional motocross racer and you give glory. And like my son kind of perked up and it's like it's, it creates, it makes God real when it, yeah. God meets you where you're at in life and then mm -hmm. blesses you through those things and having the financial means to be able to do that sport or do any activity. And then that seat time in the truck with my kid driving two races and back and forth. I got off on a tangent. It's a rabbit no, trail. But what, don't great. you do this like he's a rabbit trail? So, <laughs> no, yeah, I got on a rabbit trail now. It but. flows around here. We take it, <laughs> we take it for Pastor Dina. We're oh, all, no, no, no. no. Yeah, You're yeah. not we're, putting no, that on me. Yeah, That's one of the. <laughs> no, we're blaming, we're blaming you. Right. But here's, you're, you're bringing up something I think is very critical to this discussion, which is Jesus is more than a statue. Yeah or a icon or on a uh, crucifix mm -hmm. that Jesus is a real person. And what made me think of it is you're talking about motorcycle racing, having Jesus, you know, mm -hmm. Jesus enjoys life. Mm -hmm. yes. And when you think about the fishermen, mm -hmm. he told them how to fish and he, he was the carpenter, but he's telling them how, why is that? Because he knows all things. And so he knows how to make you successful in whatever field mm -hmm. you go into. If it's motorcycle racing or carpentry, or mm -hmm. if you're an English major and you're writing papers and books, or if you're an artist and you're drawing or sculpting things, or, mm -hmm. you know, you could go through all these different fields, but Jesus wants to go with you in your journey in life. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of what you're saying. Alpha helped you come to that point of focus mm -hmm. of really realizing to put him first. Mm -hmm. And I have to say something, and then we're going to come back to that. But since everybody's doing their little tangents, okay. <laughs> but I have to just speak to, you know, you said something, and you can see it in your face, Don, like the joy of the Lord and just realizing Jesus is joyful. I mean, some of those, so many of those pictures you see or the statues. I mean, obviously when he's, you know, you see him on the crucifix and you have that, it's painful. But it's always somber and sullen and and that's not who Jesus is, because that scripture, we always quote, the joy of the Lord is our strength. 
he has joy. And when he looks at you, it brings him joy. Um, so just knowing that this Jesus, you know, we are getting to know the real Jesus through this and that you would be able to have that experience. But, you know, with that, I just wanted you to take a moment, um, Pastor Mitch, just to talk about why we do Alpha. I mean, we've given testimonies and things, but it's something that you say, but we recognize, you know, you are an evangelist (laughs) and that is near and dear to your heart. But if you could just say, why do we do this and speak to that? That's a great question. And honestly, the whole reason why we do go through all this effort about Alpha is because I believe that when you meet the biblical Jesus, the real Jesus, not the church Jesus, Mm -hmm. not the Jesus statue or... You sound like Ricky Bobby in (laughs) Talladega Nights. Sweet Sweet baby baby Jesus. Jesus. Sweet baby Jesus, 18 half inches. Not that we know that. (laughs) Not that I like We haven't ever watched it. I like all those things. (laughs) Sit there as we bless the food. Sweet dear baby Jesus. But the part, the part that just, uh, just is so fascinating to me is when people meet the biblical Jesus, yeah. it changes them. They just change. It's just, they go, and we've had the privilege in this community of just leading hundreds, if not thousands of people to the Lord, uh, mm-hmm. watching people like successful businessmen that had a cocaine had it, uh, looking at people that the drug dealer that got saved, that came in here one yeah. day and gave his life to Christ. Yeah. Uh, the single mom that's going through these struggles of trying to provide for her kids and come here and find relief and hope and to find a uh, congregation, a family of faith to help support them. Uh, even like we right now, we got one of the guys in our church is going through this incredible battle with cancer and watching the church mm-hmm. rally around him. And so to me, Jesus is the answer to every problem, but he also partners with us. And so yeah. we have a chance to walk with him and to be his hands, his feet, his eyes. Mm -hmm. And then to me, it's icing on the cake when you talk about the supernatural role Mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit that he empowers you, gives you the courage to confess that Jesus is alive, that he's really here. Um, I was talking to a guy the other day and he's saying, you know, Mitch, he says, I read the Bible and you know, those people that live 900 years old and all this other things, I don't know if I believe all this stuff. And so I asked him a simple question, I said, do you believe that Jesus is risen from the dead? He goes, oh, yeah. I said, man, you've already conquered the mountain of faith. You're on the backside. Don't worry about all the other stuff. If you believe that Jesus is risen from the dead, you have already gone through the top mm-hmm. of the mountain of faith. I mean, a lot of people don't believe that, but for people who believe it, mm-hmm. all the other stuff in the Bible is simple because you're talking about a guy who lived 2,000 years. years ago, and you talk to him today, or you heard from him, or he, <laughs> I mean, that that is incredible faith that you would believe in all those things. Yeah. So I'm here just to encourage you with the whole thing about Alpha. It goes back to the basic tenet, which is about faith. So I'll back up to that gentleman you talked about um, who has cancer actually came through Alpha, and that was one of his first interactions with this church. And, you know, I think through his life situation, he was, like, starting to come to the point of faith, and is there, what's, what, is there more to life than this? And, like, wow, cancer has kind of got to that point where it totally changed his life, and he started looking at things from a different level, and Alpha was that gateway for him to kind of get in. And now I see, like, his growth spiritually and personally, and he's already exceeded doctors' expectations of how long he was supposed yeah. to live and where the cancer's at and just his strength. Mm-hmm. And it's not physical strength. I think it's yeah. his emotional and mental yeah. strength, oh, yeah. and spiritual strength that it's kind of keeping him going and just seeing how his kids and his wife and, and, yeah. and like you said, the church is rallying around him. So mm-hmm. Alpha had, I think, a little bit or a lot to do with where he's at and, oh, and yeah. what's happening. So like Alpha, like I said, was that gateway. And that was his, well, I think one of his first experiences of coming to this church. Like he came here, has questions and it aligned perfectly when Alpha was starting. And he came all 11 weeks and it was just kind of interesting to see mm-hmm. his transformation. And you talk mm-hmm. about that joy and like seeing somebody who was in dire straits in their life mm-hmm. and yeah. seeing that glow come out of him and mm-hmm. somebody who's going through that horrific of a, of a, oh, yeah. of a you know, a physical challenge. It was just mm-hmm. pretty amazing. So, mm-hmm. you know, Alpha touches and comes, to, you know, where you're at. And, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool to be able to see that and have a small part of that. And it's undeniable. It's like, you know. Well, I, yeah, I think what you're saying, Don, is the networking that goes on when you're mm-hmm. part of a group. I know my son was here for his job stuff and then he's left and he's gone to another state. 
but he still talks about his peeps in the alpha mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's mm -hmm. just this bonding that goes on when you go through the course. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing too is alpha then is transition. Like I started running a book of John Bible study because then, you know, you get through the basics of, is there more life to this? And you learn about the basics of mm -hmm. Christian life and also life in general. And then you want to dive in and you want to learn more. And you were saying about the mountain of faith. And if you got over the fact that, you know, Jesus rose from the dead and all that, that's like, okay, that's bizarre. But it's, you know, you believe that and you kind of see that and you see that he's alive in each of us today. But then you look at some of the other stuff that's in the Bible and you know, the other result and it comes out and that's where I was like you don't want to disagree with people in alpha or in but there's a lot of crazy stories that are in this book oh, you yeah. know like oh, we were talking yeah. last week about you know the story of Joshua and he asked they were in a battle to take back mm -hmm. you know the promised land and he you know, they need more daylight and he asked God to stop the day and God paused the sun in the sky and it's like yeah, Whoa, how does that work how does that work yeah that's like <laughs> really <laughs> that's in the Bible it's in the Bible it it's a lot of works but the one thing comes out of this too is like for me, I learned about um, Nikki Gumbel. Let's go back to the guy who's, you know, who facilitated and made Alpha Grow. He does also something called the Bible in One Year app. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. if an alpha, you can't get enough Alpha, you could actually have Nikki and his wife, Pippa, which I love her name. She's funny. Yeah. So yeah. they basically pick mm -hmm. a psalm or a proverb mm -hmm. and then a chunk from the Old Testament and a chunk from the New Testament each day. So for about 30 minutes, and I do it when I'm driving into work or you know, mm -hmm. doing things around the house, and, and you go through the Bible so it reads it, and then you have Nikki unpacking it and his wife kind of adding commentary, and it's amazing. Same thing in a production value. So when the Bible's read, it's this proper British voiceover artist who's reading this dramatic interpretation of the mm -hmm. Bible, and then you get Nikki comes in and kind of unpacks it with that theme, and it's pretty cool. So over the course of the year, you go through the whole Bible. So I'm now, I you think, know, like four King times James through it. English, 1611 only. Yeah. There's some people <laughs> that believe that. I just listened to a guy last night go through this whole thing, and all I can tell you is the Bible is translated and you can take, there's not a perfect translation from the Greek or Hebrew into English. you got all these varieties. But 99.99% .99 of the biblical text, there's no dispute about. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. even though you listen, but I love listening to the English accent. It mm -hmm. makes it seem so <laughs> educated. Yeah, yeah, they're not doing it in the King James. They're doing it with a modern translation. But still, yeah. with that British accent, it definitely helps. So the Bible in one year it. app is you know an al offshoot yeah. of, of alpha so yeah. i'd recommend yeah. that so it's, yeah. it's something you could easily download on your iphone and mm -hmm. and there you have it you know with you all day long and at your convenience so mm -hmm. yep and i do it too so i can vouch for that um so for closing remarks any thoughts anything that uh we didn't cover i've got one other just quick just a encouragement anytime you invest in the things of god he always gives back to you more than what you've invested it's not like, you know, tit for tat, so to speak, or I give God a dollar, he gives me a dollar back. No, if I give God a dollar, he gives me, you know, a hundred dollars back. Yeah. Or if I give him time, mm -hmm. he gives time back. And I don't think there's anything more important than to invest in your spiritual life where you would mm -hmm. take the time to at least investigate these things and to be able to research them and give yourself an opportunity to prove if it be true you want to join in. If it's false, then you can just walk away thinking, I investigated, I looked at it, it didn't work for me, I'm not going there. But I'm just saying that most people that come with an open mind and begin to really investigate these things are going to be like Nikki Gum will go from atheist to believer because you realize Jesus is real. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then the other thing too is usually our, our meetings are on Tuesday, mm -hmm. Taco Tuesday. Taco oh. Tuesday. Taco wow. Tuesday. So we do that every week. So that's my closing remark. Taco Tuesday. <laughs> I don't think we have we tacos you, every Tuesday, Feed right? you in the natural, feed you in the spiritual. There it's all go. there. We get it all. Good stuff. And maybe you just want to reference again, if people want to find out more information, how can they do that? So alpha.org. Um, and you could, you know, search for an alpha with your zip code and you can find an alpha class near you. And if you happen to be in a state college area, you go to our website, which is cccsc.org. Um, mm -hmm. which is triple C state college sc.org mm -hmm. and go there and you can find all the activities we have going on along with the alpha course what's happening so if uh, you know you're listening to in the fall of 2021 is that what year we're in <laughs> so every Tuesday night here at church we'll be meeting at six o'clock in the lobby and then mm -hmm. kind of breaking off and the youth will go to their room um, the adults will go to the room after we have an awesome meal together and then uh, get back together so yeah that's it so alpha.org or triple uh, C sc.org so find out more there you go well thank you you guys for having this conversation and i just want to thank you for tuning in hopefully you've got some uh, information that you can check out and again if you are in this area i encourage you come out and join us so with that until next time we say god bless thank you for joining us please make sure to like share and subscribe 
And if you liked what you heard today, please consider donating. You can support C3 by clicking the giving button on our homepage at cccsc.org or by texting cccsc to 833-257-5698. Thanks again and have an awesome day. And remember, God has a great plan for your life.